Hey, hey, welcome to Higher Maths. This is the course. Similar to National 5, it is split into one, two, three units. Unit 1 we can start really now, and we'll be working on that until around about the October holidays. After that, we'll be looking at Unit 2 till about Christmas time, and then starting January at the latest, we'll be looking at Unit 3. Unit 1 starts with straight line. There's also recurrence relations, which is quite short. There's functions, which looks at a lot of things like graphs and trig. There's also differentiation. Unit 2 moves on to polynomials and quadratics, everybody's favourite. There's integration, there's circles, there's the double angle formula and wave function. And then Unit 3, as I said, will start January the latest, will be vectors, further calculus and logs. What I'm going to do then today is start with Unit 1, Chapter 1, which is looking at the straight line. A lot of this we have touched on in National 5, so the first wee bit is just looking at some revision of a gradient. What I've done with this chapter is I've taken the 13 lessons and I'm going to make them into 13 videos. If I was doing this in class it would not take 13 hours to go through it all. A lot of it I would lump together so it would be shorter. But starting off anyway with this uh, part one which is looking at revision of a gradient. So to go through this we have a gradient revision. So thinking first of all about what gradient is, well you know gradient is just how steep a straight line is. So if you're thinking about your straight line equation, first of all, what is it? Yes, everybody's shouting it, you've got y equals mx plus c. Thinking about those two parts then, we've got m and we've got c, what is m? That's right, m is the gradient. How do you go about finding the gradient? Say you knew two points on the line, what is the equation that you would use to find the gradient? That's right, phasma. It is y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. The c in the equation as well, what is c? Yes, c is your y-intercept. It's the point that the straight line crosses your y-axis. You can also rearrange this equation. You can write it in other forms. If, for example, you moved every term over to the left-hand side, you would have something y, something x, and then c would equal zero. But we'll look at that later on, okay? Thinking further more then about the straight line on the next page, if we go on and think about the straight line, about what it might look like if we were plotting points, joining them up, that's what we end up getting. You could have your straight line going up from left to right, just like this wee diagram from Maths Revision. If you did have that, then what could you say about the gradient? Yes, again, I can hear you shouting, it would be a positive gradient. Well done. Okay, so going up from left to right would be a positive gradient. Let's say it wasn't going up. Let's say it was going down. Then what would happen to that? Well, yeah, it's not a positive gradient. It would be a negative gradient. Okay, so M, your gradient, would be less than zero. As well as sloping up or sloping down, you could also have it doing other things as well. Your straight line could just be flat. What's the fancy word for your line when it's flat? What could you say about it? Starts with an H ends in horizontal. That's right, it is horizontal. So you could have a horizontal line and thinking about the gradient of a horizontal line, what would you say? Well, the gradient would just be zero, okay? If you want to write down the equation of that line, well, you can see here it's written down, it's got y equals c. And the reason for that is, if you imagine some point in the line, say you came along 5 and went up 2, you'd have the point 5, 2. The point beside that would be going along 6 and up 2. Along from that, you go 7 and then up 2. Every single y value would have to be 2. The same back here, you could have negative 3, 2, or negative 4, 2. It's always going to be something 2. So the y value is always 2, so it's just going to be y equals 2. Or if the line was further up, if it's up here, maybe y equals 3 or y equals 4. Okay, as it says there in that wee uh, bit in red. As well as a horizontal line, what else could you have? 
If the line was going straight up and down, then you could say it wasn't horizontal, you would say it was a vertical. How do you remember which one's which? Which one's horizontal, which one's vertical? The way I always remember it is the word horizon. Imagine if you're a pirate on a ship, a war, then you would have your horizon away in the distance. It'd be perfectly flat, which is just like this line here. Okay, it's flat. Vertical goes up and down, similar to the letter V. If you were writing it, you would have to draw your pencil down and then up. So up and down is going to be vertical. What would you say then about the gradient of a vertical line? Thinking about the gradient, what it actually is. If you remember way back to primary three, when you learned first of all about gradient, it's the vertical divided by horizontal. Well, the vertical, you could measure the distance easily enough, but then the horizontal, there is no horizontal, the line is not moving back at all. So you'd be dividing by zero. And as you all know, if you divide by zero, it breaks the world. So you would say it is undefined. It does not um, have a gradient, okay? It's just undefined, that is what you would say. Similar to this gradient here, as uh, so to this equation here, you've got y equals c. Well, if it was a vertical line, you would have x equals something. Again, for the same reason. Imagine if you had a point on here, such as 4, 0. Above that, you'd have 4, 1, and then 4, 2, and then 4, 3. The x value, if you write down the coordinates, would always be 4. So you just have x equals 4. So a would just be whatever number it's crossing on this x-axis. Again, just as it says there. The last wee bit. Imagine if you had two lines like this. You can see these red lines are going in the same direction. They're just running like train tracks. They're not getting closer together. They're not getting further apart. So they do have the same gradient. It's the same steepness. And what would you say about two lines that do have the same gradient? Yes, they would be parallel. Perfectly right. Okay, moving on to some examples then. There are three examples here. The first one, write down the gradient and y-intercept of these equations. So let's do them one at a time. So we've got y equals 8x minus 7. If you remember your equation of a straight line is just y equals mx plus c. So m is the number in front of x, it's the coefficient here. So really how many x's have you got? You've got 8, so m would be 8. So the gradient is 8. C is the y-intercept. It's really the plus or minus that's on its own on the end most of the time. You've got a minus 7, so C would be minus 7. Next one. Y equals 0.2x plus 5. Again, thinking about the gradient, it's Y equals mx, so something x. How many x's? 0.2, so the gradient is 0.2. C is the number on its own, so it's 5, so that'd be crossing at 0.5. Next one, y equals two fifths of x. So again, we're looking for m and c. So think about the equation of the straight line, y equals mx plus c. m would be two fifths because you've got two fifths x. Make sure when you write these, you don't include the x. Don't write down two fifths x or eight x. Get rid of the x, it's just the number in front of it that you're looking for. C is going to be the number that's on its own here. Well, there's no number in, on its own. You're not adding anything. So that's just going to be zero. That line there, if you sketched it, would be going through the origin at zero, zero. And the last one here for D, you've got Y equals negative three. Again, think about the gradient, the Y intercept. What's the gradient? What would you have for that? Ms. Amel, you are perfectly right. You would have zero. Well done, Ms. Amel. And for C, the y-intercept, that's the number on its own. Well, the number on its own is a negative 3. There's 0x, which is why that's 0. And the number on its own is negative 3. Example 2. So with this one, work out the gradient of the line that is joining these two points. You could always go off to the side and you could sketch it and you could then work out the uh, vertical over horizontal or you could use the equation. So gradient is y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. If you start putting in the values then, let's do that. So you know when you've got your points, you've got an x value and a y value and an x value and a y value. Let this be point 0.1, let that be point 0.2. If you get them back to front, it makes no difference. You will still get the same answer because it's still the same line. It's still the same gradient. But putting the values in here, y2 take y1, so you'd have 8 take away 3, over 3 take away 6. Simplify that. 
So that's going to give you 5 over negative 3, and that is your answer. Just remember with the negative, you could have the negative at the bottom, you could then put it at the top, you could put it at the side, it makes no difference whatsoever. Okay, a lot of the people like just taking the negative to the side. And obviously if you did have two negatives, they would cancel out. Okay, so that is the answer for that one. And last but not least, example three. Given the points C and D, work out the value of P if the gradient of the line CD is one quarter. I'm writing it out like this, but that would be one over four. So again, think about the question. So it's talking about gradient of a straight line, it's giving you points. So right away you should be thinking M equals Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. From here you want to then go through that and start filling in what you know. Obviously you don't know P, but you could just leave it in as P. So you could just do Y2 take Y1, so you could just write it down as 7 take away P. And you could also have X2 take X1 would be 10 take away 2. What you've got to remember though is you also know M, you know the gradient, it's telling you that it's one quarter. So you can replace M with one quarter. So start subbing in the values here, so a quarter would be 7 take away P over 10 take away 2. After that you can do different things here. What you may want to do first of all is just do a tiny wee step. You've got down here 10 take away 2, we know that's 8 so we could just write that as 8. What you're wanting to find is you want to find P. So I would tend to get rid of anything else on that side. So I would multiply both sides by 8 or move the 8 to the other side and multiply because it's the opposite of the divide by 8. If you do that you would move this over here so you would get 8 over 4. And that would leave you with 7 take away P but we're no longer dividing by 8. Okay, We're multiplying both sides by 8 Okay, or we're moving this over. So it gives me 8 over 4 would equal 7 take away P. From that, obviously, 8 divided by 4 would just be 2, so I'd have 2 as 7 take away P. And from there, again, you could start balancing, you could start moving things over the equal sign, you could start adding P to both sides or taking away 7. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you get the right answer. What I would probably do is just cover this up and think 7 take away something is 2. Well, the something would have to be 5. So P is going to be equal to 5, and I'm chopping the bottom of it off. So P equals 5. Okay, That is the questions then for this review of straight line, the gradient revision. What I'd like you to try now is in the intermediate 2 slash credit book from TJ, is to have a go at page 209, 210, questions 1 to 14. If you do them, which you should be able to do quite quickly, there are additional questions. There's more revision on page 212 and 213. Make sure that you check your answers as you go through it. The answers are all at the back. And success criteria, I can calculate the gradient of straight line. Think about how well you're answering these questions here. Is it a wee smiley happy face? Is it a sad face? Or are you somewhere in between? Maybe needing a wee bit more practice.